Our first guest today is the wonderful Nikki Krieber. Nikki has created a business in support of people diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. She is a coach, mentor and guide, helping men and women find courage and strength to live their best lives. She is the epitome of resilience, strength and light. Let's welcome Nikki to the show to hear more about her incredible journey. Welcome, Nikki Kriba. Divine. Thank you. <laughs> I feel um, divine being here. <laughs> Fantastic, oh, Nikki. So many things I'd love to ask you, but I guess the first one is, how did it feel when you were diagnosed with oh. Parkinson's disease? Nobody ever forgets that moment. Mm. I was in a mahogany-lined room with a, neuro a neurologist, you know, highly qualified professor, something or other, and all I remember is the air shimmering and this buzzing in my head and feeling like I was falling because he just came out with it. Oh, yeah, I think you've got Parkinson's. Pretty sure you've got Parkinson's disease. And I was like, oh, no what? warning. No, no bedside manner. It leaves a lot to be desired. Oh. So I just went into this state where I don't even know if I was breathing. Oh. And then I heard something about medication. Next thing, my chair was being pulled out from underneath me. So, you know, as you do, you get up. He took me to the door, opened the door, and I was out looking at all these faces in front of me going, oh, my God, can they see that I've got Parkinson's? Oh, <laughs> you know, wow. I was literally in shock and I just stood there and he has the most amazing receptionist. She's still with him and she just mm. eyeballed me, big smile on her face until I kind of was drawn in and she, she just talked to me until the shock broke. Oh. And I don't know what she said. Mm. <laughs> In the end, it was here's your medication and give us a ring and da da da. And I went to the car park, and an hour later, I found myself sitting in my car. I had just gone into shock. And that story is not unusual. That's what most people do. In the hour in the car park, I lost my bucket list. I saw my kids all growing up without me. My career oh. was gone. All this was just going on in my head because literally, the bone gets pointed at you. And as Aussies, we know what that means. You've lost your value to your tribe, to your people, you're gone. And the shock stays with you for a long time. Oh, Nikki, what a thing to go through. And I think, you know, you hear about this happening to other people, but you kind of go, oh, that won't happen to me. Uh -huh. And I can only imagine what that would be like. Mm. So how do you help other people navigate this very difficult time? Well, most people have that experience and the people that don't have that experience, they really haven't engaged with what's happened to them. So they'll be sailing along going, no, I'm fine, I'm okay. Um, so the people that are in that state, it's a state of shock, denial, mm. anger. It follows a process, grief, mm. stress, depression, anxiety, mm. apathy. It's a bit like losing someone. I guess you've lost yourself in that moment when you're being diagnosed. It's That's like right. you're mourning who you were. were. But, and what your life was. And what you could be. Yeah. Mm. And you just start on this spiral. And that spiral can go on for five years. And in that spiral, another neurotransmitter called cortisone steps in because oh. Parkinson's is about not having enough dopamine neurotransmitter being released into your brain. So cortisol comes along and says, it's okay, we can manage, I'll do it. But cortisol is about fight or flight. So people get pushed into a state of fight or flight. And I call it 5F syndrome because fear can trigger it. So anytime they think about what they're going to do next week, oh, I won't be able to do that, I've got Parkinson's, oh. it triggers. So it's fear, fleeing, fighting, flying, you know, flight or freezing, and they get stuck there. So that's my work with my clients initially is to get them to understand what, how the body's reaction, the body's taking this reaction inside it. Oh, my gosh. Now, you took a sabbatical after your diagnosis. <laughs> Take us through that journey. Well, 
I took a sabbatical after four years. Oh. I had the worst four years where I, they were just trying me out on medication after medication. I was ill. I had terrible brain fog. I could hardly move. I couldn't get up the 14 stairs to my front door. Oh. I couldn't cook anymore. I was living with one teenage daughter and one grown daughter. I couldn't prepare food for them. I, could, I was just lost. And... Um, a friend breezed in, <laughs> As <laughs> a they do. long time friend, yes. And I'd done a lot of project manager management with her over the year, years, and she just came for a cup of tea. And then she, we got into the goss, you know, what the kids are doing, all of that. So as girlfriends do, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, "Oh, you know, one of my daughters is stuck in Germany, and she was studying in Germany. She's got really bad homesickness, and I'd love to go over." I said, "Oh, well, what's holding you up?" She said, "Oh, well, I've got to get." this done at the house and I've got to get this done and this done and this done. And then she looked at me and she said, you wouldn't like to do it for me, would you? Because <laughs> I love, I have a history of renovating and I'm a misdirected architect and um, <laughs> I love project management and I'm going, oh, it's so long since I did anything in my passions, oh. so long. What would happen if I did something in my passions? Because, you know, mm. I was comatose because I had Parkinson's. I've got to rest. I've got Parkinson's. Mm. And... Over her head, my husband's standing behind her going, <laughs> and I'm going, I think I could. <gasps> so it was building a six-birth shed, renovating an acre and a half garden, putting oh. a second bathroom in the house, painting the house for two years. Oh she was gosh. going for two years and it was just, I went to my neurologist and I said, this is what I want to do, off all medication, and mm. for the next two years I'm just going to work like a labourer and see what my body does because I had no confidence in my body. Oh, my gosh. I'd lost it. I couldn't, I couldn't sit here for any extended time. Oh. I couldn't walk up a set of steps without tripping. All confidence in my body was gone. And at the end of two years, I'd won control of my body back. Wow. Which in terms of Parkinson's is just huge. That's amazing. And, and oh, my gosh. There's so many things I would love to chat with you about, <laughs> but uh, as we wrap up today, Nikki, what's been one of your biggest inspirations or mentors throughout your life? Hmm. What or who? Uh, I think I grew up with the, in the era where your mother told you girls can do anything. Mm. So I thought I could do anything. I was a woodworker for a while and I was childcare director and I was this and that. I've just done a myriad of things because the world's there and I can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I've had ancestral feminine lineage guidance, mm. a lot of very strong women on my mother's side. And in every area of my life when I was in education, I had a number of very strong mentors. Um, but I must say... Here in the Girlfriend Hour, when I look back, my girlfriends have been the biggest mm. mentors in my life. When my first marriage broke up, my husband had brain damage from an accident. We'd been through a terrible time. And, in fact, my girlfriend that's here now took me to lunch and she said, I can see glimmers of Nikki. You're going to come back. You're going to come back. I've missed you so much. Aww. And that taught me so much about how, how, how much women accommodate, yeah. you know, to help their family get through situations. Aww. Give it up for Nikki Creva. You're amazing. <laughs> what a woman. What a story. Are you loving the Girlfriend Hour so far? We hope you've been inspired by the wonderful women you've seen sharing their stories. Do you have an inspiring story of your own to share? We're looking for magic just like yours. Be featured in Feminescence magazine and start your own exciting media journey. Join many other fabulous women who've been profiled in Feminescence magazine. Unlock access to an international audience, propel your career and expand your network. Make today the day you back yourself. What are you waiting for? Visit feminescence.com.au to find out more.